Hi, good afternoon everyone. Uh, my name is Rendani Mraozi from uh, Access. Um, today I'm going to be dishing a very fascinating uh, presentation uh, prepared by George Philander uh, from uh, Princeton uh, University. Um, uh, the title of the presentation is uh, By Bread Alone. It's, uh, it's a question. Fiona Foster fulfills a childhood wish when uh, on a visit to the equator in Kenya. She excitedly watches how water draining from a bowl swells clockwise in one hemisphere, uh, counterclockwise in uh, the other. Um, at the conclusion of uh, this demonstration by an African professor, uh, Fiona turns to the camera and remarks to her BBC audience, uh, I quote, I know this is a load of rubbish and can't possibly be true, but what can I say? I'm impressed. Close quote. This remark may sound inconsistent, but it's not uh, because uh, uh, to Fiona, uh, the professor's uh, purported demonstration um, of uh, the Corollis force is um, uh, entertaining as the performance of an expert magician. Her comment uh, makes some scientists uh, cringe. Um, uh, science is not about magic, uh, but uh, they should pay attention because uh, uh, she's offering sound advice concerning um, uh, a serious problem, uh, namely poor communications uh, between scientists and uh, laymen. Um, science is often um, uh, taught as um, if it, uh, it were a mere list of facts or you know, a series of logical deductions. Uh, a sense of wonder and awe is uh, frequently lacking, uh, even when uh, the phenomenon being considered as uh, truly amazing. Uh, Fiona, uh, or Fiona's uh, response to the demonstration is uh, a reminder that a man cannot uh, live by uh, bread alone. So, for a different uh, perspective on the uh, demonstration at uh, the equator, uh, we can turn to the World Wide Web, where some uh, uh, scientists angrily um, uh, denounce uh, the professor as a cheat and a charlatan who takes advantage of uh, naive terrorists. Um, the scientists um, insist uh, that uh, the demonstration be stopped. Uh, their proposal raises a, a ranging ethical dilemma um, similar to the one um, the Pope faced in his uh, confrontation with uh, um, Galileo, um, which is uh, more important uh, um, scientific truths or the welfare of uh, an African who earns a, a living uh, from uh, the demonstration. Um, global warming has uh, similarities with uh, the demonstration at uh, the equator. Um, uh, it poses a scientific question uh, with uh, an, a, an objective answer um, and a difficult ethical question uh, whose answer depends on uh, uh, subjective factors uh, such as uh, our economic status. To, to deny that um, human activities are affecting the planet adversely uh, is uh, irresponsible. Uh, but to, to assure uh, those living in, uh, you know, abject poverty that uh, the uh, future will uh, be worse is um, uh, uh, cruel. Um, today, discussions uh, for global warming are highly polarized, uh, in part because of our reluctance to, um, I mean, deal with um, such ethical dilemmas. Um, for guidance on how to cope with uh, polarized situations, um, we can turn to um, Nelson Mandela. Um, his methods are on display in uh, the film Invictus, um, where he transforms uh, the game of rugby, uh, a symbol of oppression in South Africa, uh, into a symbol um, of um, unity by democratizing the, um, the game. Um, we similarly need to transform global warming from stories of imminent gloom uh, and doom um, into uh, an opportunity uh, for education. Uh, that's the, the, the key to the alleviation of uh, poverty uh, by democratizing science, uh, making it accessible to everyone, uh, you know, making it fun, uh, using it to boost self-confidence and self-esteem. Uh, our marvelous environment is the, the ideal vehicle for those uh, uh, purposes. 
Uh, these are the, the goals of uh, habitable, uh, habitable Planet uh, workshops offered by um, uh, Access. Um, and finally, the obstacle to progress uh, is not ignorance, but uh, uh, the illusion of uh, um, knowledge. Um, uh, thank you very much uh, for, for your time.